Hey, I'm Morgan Rose. I play in the band Seven Dust. I have been with Vader since 2000. It's like 10 years. Jesus Christ. Without a doubt, they're the most, uh, they're the most, the, the easiest to deal with company, and I've got all the companies that I work with are amazing, but I go through more gear uh, than anybody that is on the roster at Vader. I'm sure they'll be jealous. I won't even say a number, but I go through a lot of sticks, and it's not because they break. It's because I'm a buffoon, and I throw sticks around the stage like, a, like an idiot, but they've always got those sticks there for me, and, uh, you know, they're amazing people. I started playing drums when I was three years old. My dad got a little Ludwig kit and uh, he had nobody to jam with. My dad was a guitar player and he was a hot guitar player in New Jersey, but had no confidence to, uh, to play with anybody. He actually had an offer to play in Mountain uh, and didn't do it because he just didn't have the, the courage to go on the stage and do it, but he was a closet shredder, shredder of 1970-something. You know, and uh, so at three years old, he bought a, a little Ludwig kit and decided he was gonna teach me how to play drums. So within a year, uh, I was playing If Six Was Nine by Hendrix at four years old but I was more interested in tearing the drums apart, putting them back together, so I've destroyed a Ludwig kit within a year. And uh, so I think the only song I ever really learned was If Six Was Nine. I think he tried to, to teach me uh, you know, another Hendrix song. Hendrix was his dude, but, uh, but I was retired at four years old. And uh, then I went into playing sports. And uh, when I got into high school, I uh, got interested in, and I was always into music, and I was always, you know, drums was the thing for me. So uh, I decided I would ask my grandparents to try to, you know, hook me up with another drum kit, and they actually got me a Pearl kit, and uh, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, and, um, you know, but I love just hitting them. I love playing, and uh, back then, you know, there was no iPods, there was no cool way of, of jamming the music. It was turned to the stereo up as loud as you could get it and, and play to it. And I kind of learned just playing to, to bands that, you know, that I liked at the time. And, uh, and I kind of sat it down again and uh, focused on sports again. And then when I was 19, I just had this deal. I wanted to, I wanted to play drums and I was gonna, it, it had to have been Tommy Lee. I mean, I liked Neil from, you know, Rush and and there were other guys that I liked. I loved, my dad had turned me on to Bozio with uh, Baby Snakes playing with Zappa. And, but Tommy Lee was probably the thing that really got me real excited about playing drums. And I was a kid and I wanted to get laid and I wanted to make millions of dollars and I wanted to be a rock star and all that stuff. I mean, that was my, it wasn't for the love of music that got me going. It was, I think I can do this and I'm weird looking and there's a lot of weird looking rock stars that can get laid. So I think that's my best chance. <laughs> so, uh, and it didn't work at all. I was too weird looking, but, uh, but that was the hair days and, uh, and I had horrible hair. So uh, I went to LA and I went to MI and didn't learn a thing. I didn't go to class, and I learned how to how to party, and I learned how to act like I was I was one of the boys in a band. But I really still wasn't even had never really even been in a band, and uh, kind of flunked out of MI without really learning anything, and uh, moved back to Georgia with my tail between my legs and being a jock from Georgia and trying to get in a band. When I was in school, the jocks and musicians didn't really get along so I had to start at the bottom. I didn't have friends that were in bands and uh, I built my my name in uh, in Georgia by just playing with bands and I played with some bands that weren't so great and uh, and then I finally got a name for myself and started to put bands together and uh, I put two bands together before I was in about five bands but I put two bands together before I started Seven Dust and I had given up on getting a record deal and uh, 
and I was just cool with jamming. At that point, I had a girlfriend. It wasn't to get laid. I, it wasn't any money, and I was already over the whole thing. You know, I was already grown up enough to not care about the the perks that come with being a rock star, and I just wanted to play music and uh, I wanted to play with people that I liked. So I put a band together with a bunch of guys that weren't the best musicians in town, but I hung out with them a lot and uh, and I had a great time with them. So that was the the best move that I ever made. I put together a, a band full of chemistry and it had nothing to do with talent. I mean, I had a guitar player in a band that didn't even own a strap and he's the guy that wrote a bunch of the, the first record, John Conley, he was a drummer. So that's the only advice I ever give to anybody is I can't, I'm nobody to give advice, but the one piece I'll give you is if you're gonna try to live a dream and, and be in a band that's gonna move on to the next level, be with people that you really care about because if you, God forbid, get stuck on a bus for 13 years, you better like the dude. And then here we are, 13 years later. So that's my career, pretty much, in a nutshell. I came up with this design uh, for the Alien Freak stick uh, strictly off of being poor. Uh, you know, when I started playing drums, uh, when I started again, uh, there wasn't a lot of money in the household and, uh, you know, I would buy sticks and I'd break the tips and I would break them pretty quick usually, so I would get used to flipping it around and playing with the, with the ass end of it. And after a few years of doing that, I preferred playing with the butt end. So I never used any any stick that was designed like this. I know that you know they were. I, I I know now that they were out there, but I really had no idea. I was just playing with the butt ends because you know that's what was comfortable for me. So it was kind of a money saver. You know, I would start playing with the tips, break the tip, play with the butt end, and all of a sudden I was getting kind of two rips out of each stick. Because I started like duct taping sticks together. I mean, I was not rich, so sticks aren't very cheap. So that was my way of uh, getting the most out of every stick. So I designed this one strictly out of you know playing with the butt end, and, and you know I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up, so this was my way to do it. I had a few influences. Um, my dad was my biggest influence and he didn't play drums at all, but he turned me on to guys. And, uh, you know, Tommy Lee was one of my first influences on my own. And I really, it took me years to realize how great he was at locking a groove down. I mean, to me, it was all about how visually cool he was, but he is, he is a badass and, uh, and he's got the groove, he's got the bounce. But, uh, yeah, I met him, a, about 10 years ago and that was like that that moment you know being on the road we had already accomplished a lot and uh, being woken up in my bunk by Tommy Lee at a radio show at a, at a festival that we were doing was pretty you know pretty outrageous to hear somebody shaking my curtain saying dude get up let's have a drink you know and I'm like who the hell is this and why the hell would I want to be drinking at 10 a.m. I open the curtain and it's Tommy Lee and I'm like absolutely <laughs> but uh so I was I was very close with him and we had talked about doing a lot of work together for a while and Seven Dust has just absorbed so much of my time that I haven't had a chance to really do anything with anybody else and this past year uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to be off the road and get a phone call from him after he had burned his hand doing something Tommy like and uh you know, he tells me, I need you right now. I need you to fly to Cincinnati, and um, I need you to fill in for me. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, 
filling in for Tommy Lee is like borderline asking somebody to fill in for like Elvis. I mean, there's a whole lot of people out there that are going to see Tommy Lee play the drums. And, uh, but I, I had to do it. I didn't really even want to do it. I was just more thinking this is a challenge for me. I didn't know the songs. I didn't, I had never listened to half of that Dr. Feelgood record. I had already moved kind of past Motley Crue a little bit. And, uh, you know, so the first time I ever heard some of those songs was an hour before I was going on stage. And I went out there without, a, without ever have playing a Motley Crue song in my life in front of 25,000 people in Cincinnati. And I just crapped my pants for about an hour and 45 minutes listening to him with a microphone talking to my ears. Here comes the bridge, here comes the chorus. You know, I kind of, kind of just skated my way through it and tried not to disappoint anybody too bad. But it was, it was a highlight of my career. It's something that I'll, I'll remember for the rest of my life. And, you know, having somebody that you idolize and be your be one of your best friends at the same time and then filling in for him and living with him for two weeks was uh, amazing. You got no more fight.